Do you give me zero for number 16, even though I was gone and posted yesterday? I didn't always do. Yeah. I was in class when I did it, and I still turned it in for points. Okay, what day were you gone? Yesterday. <laughs> okay, we didn't have. It was number 116. Uh, it was from the 17th, though. Yeah, but you posted it during class, and so I wasn't, I didn't know it was there, so I didn't see it. And then you graded it. But it's I know, but when you miss class on Wednesday, you have to be caught up before Monday. Well, I've already done it. I'm saying you didn't oh. post it. Oh, yeah, 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 I got you. Did you already turn it into Google Classroom? No, I just, I figured you wanted to Oh, okay, to that's fine. Yeah, it. just let me see it real quick. I know what you're saying now. I thought you meant you just hadn't done it yet because you hadn't been in here. Hold on, don't leave. I'll just put them both in. Thank you. 116. Well. Had a grade for you on 119, okay. so I, I don't know if I. I think that's thank you. Yep. Trophy. It holds an apple trophy thing. The Where is it? Piece of plastic. It. It's funny. Um, the FRQ for like the six of them, is it okay if I turn that in next class? I watched the video, but I didn't have time to do the um, the FRQ, like the sixth one on the, that one huge packet you gave us since I wasn't here Friday. Do you know what I'm talking about? 95? Okay. I'll have it in by tonight. Okay. Okay. But I think you should put your trophy out. No, it's at home already. I didn't type all my work onto the classroom thing because it feels like I didn't find all the math. Oh, no, no, that's fine. That's fine. Is that your scoring stuff? No, so that's just all of my work. That's fine. Hold on to it. Okay. You'll need it. Do you want it or no? Uh, no. Business Thompson will be here. I
Tuesday, April 23rd, 2024. Would you please join me in a minute of silence? several different things to tell you guys about and to make sure you know what some of this is why I'm giving you some of this so make sure that you're following along with me closely here um, but first off if you forgot to turn in the homework that would have been 95 finally that was the one with the six FRQs we just hadn't done FRQ 6 until last class so that's why I hadn't been asking for it even though we did a, the rest of it a long time ago so if you forgot to turn that into Google Classroom, you can still turn it in right now for full points. And 116 was also from like over a week ago, I think. But since I wasn't asking you to turn anything else in, I wanted to give you points for that. So you might want to double check that you got those in Google Classroom. And if not, this is your last chance for full credit. Okay, uh, so in a minute, we will, I will ask you to uh, go to AP Classroom, and you should have the six FRQs finished from the mock exam. So, uh, I need you to go through and score those. So, I open that up where that should work for you. <clears throat> now, I totally understand why you might not have typed some of your work in the little boxes, because I know that's a real pain. So, you might need to look at your... Uh, where you did your scratch work for it so that you could see what you wrote down. But you need to score yourself on those six FRQs. It walks you through like FRQ 1, part A might be worth 0, 1, or 2 points or something. You just click the little box and then it keeps up with it for you. So have you all done that for other classes before where you score your own FRQs? Yeah? Okay. If you're not sure how to do that, I'll help you. Again, I don't really know uh, AP Classroom from that side. so but we can figure it out together. So that's going to be the first thing I ask you to do. And then uh, one of the mini handouts you picked up today is a scoring guide. So it asks you to write down how many multiple choice you got right, multiply it by 1.2, you get a number, score each of your six FRQs out of nine, add them up, see what your total score out of 108 was. And then there's a conversion chart below that shows you that if this had been your real AP exam and assuming you didn't use your notes and assuming you didn't use extra time and all that other stuff, um, this is where you would have landed for that AP exam. And again, this is a real AP exam. It's an international version, but you know, that's still basically the same. They just don't release the non-national, the non-international versions very often anymore. Um, so that's the first thing I'd like you to do, kind of just see where you land. Um, of course, we've still got several more days. This wasn't your real AP exam. You've got s several more hours of in-class and some more time outside of class. So, you know, this isn't the end-all be-all. So, of course, your score on the real AP exam could be better. I'd say for most people, it's usually better. I will warn you, though, that uh, a few years ago, I had a student make a four on the mock exam, but then made a two on the real exam. Um, and for his case, I think what it was is that he was so confident with the calculus and he saw how he did on the mock exam that he focused only on his other AP exams and then got a bit unlucky. So 
I only point that out to you so that you're careful there. <clears throat> so in a minute, I'm going to ask you to move forward and do the grading on that first. Then one of the other handouts you picked up today is 130. It's a circuit on product rule, quotient rule, and chain rule. So of course, stuff that you should be pretty good at at this point. But doing AP review, I know that um, derivatives and stuff is the stuff that you just don't practice as much. So uh, I wanted to give you a little bit of practice there. There is a hint on the board for you, but for the circuit, but you don't need that till the very last question. So when you get stuck on the last question, if you get stuck on the last question, it's because there's some double angle that you don't have to know, but you need the double angle to be able to finish the circuit. So I don't know, sure why they do that. Okay, and then finally, the last of the many handouts I gave to you, the other three are part of a document called when you see dot, 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 this is what you do. So there's not questions for you to work on there. It's purely informational. Uh, would make great flashcards if you wanted to cut them up or write them on a flashcard. But basically, it just tries to help you think about when you see this on the calculus question, this is the approach or the question or the theorem they're asking you to use. And, you know, especially on the AP where everything's mixed together, I feel like that's one of the biggest challenges, just knowing how to start the question. So um, I'm giving you that and I'm suggesting to you that you just kind of read through those and maybe put a star next to the ones that you're not familiar with and not mark the ones you are familiar with and then you just kind of narrow down which ones you need to review and look at again uh, before the AP exam. Okay, uh, and then I need to give you two other announcements and then I will get out of your way and let you score your mock exam. But. Uh, about right now, maybe just a couple minutes ago, but there was another mock exam opened up in AP Classroom. It's completely optional. It's not for class points. You don't have to do it. But if after you study a little bit more, you want to do another mock exam and see how you've improved or see what other type of questions they've thrown at you, I just wanted that to be a resource available for you. So again, you don't have to do it and I didn't unlock it until this morning because I didn't want you to get it confused with your homework part. So that's just a resource. Do it if you want, don't do it if you don't want. All right, and then last thing I need to tell you about is now that the mock exam part homework pieces are done, I can go ahead and give you the information about our last unit test. So remember right before spring break, we did area between two curves, L'Hopital's rule, we came back from spring break, we did uh, volumes of rotations or revolutions, the disk method, washer method, and we did volumes where you integrated area, volumes of known cross sections uh, from known cross sections where you had to memorize those five geometry formulas. So that's the stuff that makes up the last exam. But as kind of a, bless you, um, I don't know, we feel like we, we do it this way for you for two reasons. One, it, well, it's a little bit easier this way and it gives us more class time for your AP review and AP practice. So your last exam is only a 30 point exam, whereas most of them have been 50 points, but it's on Delta Math. So the trade off is that you have to do that for homework. The other side is you can take as long as you need to on it you can use a calculator on it. You can go check your notes on it. Um, but you do have to make sure you write this down or something. You do have to write your work down and you'll have to submit your work. So if you get question one number right on the mock exam, not the mock exam, the Delta Math exam, but you don't have work that supports that, that doesn't count. You have to write down the stuff that you did. So if it takes you longer, it's fine. If you need to use your notes, it's fine. But that should be, you know, if you're willing to put in the effort, that should be a good test score for you. Now, today is the only day that I'm going to make it be your homework. So I would ask that you please do it before Thursday, but technically you have a week to do it. So what I mean by that is I don't have any homework for you up there, no mini quiz to study for, nothing else like that other than turning in an assignment today. But on Thursday, I will have... Um, 
some other homework for you. So if you wait and you push it off till right before it's due, then you're going to get uh, double dipped. So please do it between now and Thursday. That's where I'm devoting time for you to do it. The other thing is uh, on the Delta Math, I know some of you have done a lot of Delta Math before, some of you have not, but um, on our Delta Math, it doesn't have any retries. So if you miss the question, you miss the question. But we will open it up for corrections, but I warn you that the corrections, you have to get three of that question type correct uh, to get the points back. So maybe question one on the Delta Math is about, it's a washer question. If you get it right, you get the points. If you miss it, you can still get the points once I open up the corrections, but you're gonna have to get three of that question type right to get the points back. So you could do this Delta Math test in as little as 10 questions and as many as 30 questions, but uh, either way you could still get full credit either way. So again, um, we feel like that's pretty friendly for you as far as making it a little bit easier, giving you more time, giving you a chance for corrections, giving you more class time for AP review and practicing other stuff um, so we didn't have to take a day out for test. But of course the trade-off is you have to do a little bit of it for homework. So between now and Tuesday. And again, please, I always say, please make sure you put it in your binder or update an alarm in your phone or something. And I know sometimes you listen to me, sometimes you don't, but I will tell you when we did this last year, we did the same thing. And there was two or three people who didn't do it on time. And then when they didn't do it on time, that means that they had to do corrections only. So they had to do 30 questions instead of 10 questions because they waited, forgot about it and messed up. So that's not what I intend for to happen to you, but if you back yourself into that corner, it might, because it has happened to people in the past. So. Is the Delta Math due Thursday or Tuesday? I'm, a, I'm giving you homework time at the end of this class. Okay. So I'm thinking that you're gonna do it tonight or tomorrow night. Yes. Delta Math is due, because I'm gonna give you different homework Thursday. Okay. There'll be like a mini quiz to study for on Thursday, a different mini quiz to study for on Friday, because this is a B week. But technically, the Delta Math isn't due until Tuesday. Yeah, we're really trying to do that. Well, I, I'm, I'm giving you one night of homework for it. It's this night. So if you guys don't do it then, don't complain about getting other homework on top of it later on. That's all I'm saying. I've spaced it out for you, but you've got to do it in the at the pace that I'm suggesting. So again, a lot of information there. Score your mock exam, go to AP Classroom, put it on that document. Practice product rule, quotient rule, chain rule. If you don't remember the product rule and quotient rule, you probably should look those up and write them on the top of your circuit page. Again, a lot of those should be pretty quick because you've been doing that for a long time. Read through the three pages of 131. Just put a star by the ones you don't think you knew so that you know what you need to study. Know that there's another mock exam on AP Classroom if you want to do it for your sake. And if you have any questions about the Delta Maths, please ask now or as soon as you think of the question. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put these homeworks in. That gives you guys time to get started. And then I'll come around and help with whatever you're working on. Uh, I think the Delta Mouse should be in um, Google Classroom. Go to Google Classroom and see if it posted a link in the assignment. I think if you click that, it'll take you straight to it. You might have to log in to Delta Math, but you should just use your school email. So school email and or log in through Google, I guess. Yeah, it is on there. Okay. And you open it and make sure that you know how to log in and stuff just in case. I only use Delta Math the, once a year, so I'm not super familiar with it. And 
um, I know some of you, again, some of you use Delta Math a ton, especially depending on when you did Algebra 2. Uh, actually, that might have been all of you. Have all of y'all used Delta Math before? Okay. Yeah, Delta Math became pretty popular around COVID, so. these 95 assignments y'all turned in doesn't have a name on it. I can't figure out who it is. It's got purple or blue corrections on it. Also, I did change one thing on the class agenda up there. Did y'all notice what was different? No? Oh, well, I mean, I updated that, yeah. Bottom right, AP exam date. So I've had that up there all year, but I haven't had the number of class days that we have left. So including today's class, there's eight class periods that we're together before y'all do your AP exam. And of course that could be minus one or two if you're sick. It could be minus one or two if you have an AP exam the day before. So I'm just gonna start that countdown so that y'all realize the urgency at this point. That I don't know, but do you have it on your paper from when you did it? Yeah. Okay, just pretend like you had typed it in. Okay. Just score it. Just score it. I mean, again, we're not doing an accuracy grade on my end, so just put in what you actually wrote on your paper, what would have been on your thing. So. Again, even, and I, the truth is, I don't know the answer to that, but also, I don't, even if I knew how to tell you that, like I'm not interested in you like spending time typing it that's in. Just either you process. either you knew what to write down or you didn't. So that's what I'm interested in.
and just a suggestion, completely optional, but while you're scoring it, if you want to write down like corrections or something in a different color, that would make it something useful to look back at in the future. Again, you don't have to do that one for me that way, but it might help you remember what you didn't consider. score? Uh, it depends. It changes every year. That year, do you see the scoring guide at the very bottom? Yeah. Uh, three, four, or five is considered passing. Although there are a few schools that only accept fours and fives.
make sure you grab it back at the end of class. Can I use this one? Uh -huh. Thank you. It should just fall right in if it's right. Just remember to switch it back at the end of the class.
Sorry, uh, these homeworks are taking me a little bit longer to grade than normal, but I'm going to take a break from that so I can come around and try to help out a little bit.
fixed, but something's off. So you got the same first step as me. It just didn't look like any of the answers. So I split apart this fraction. I put this over this, and then minus this over this, and then reduce each one. Oh, okay. And then it'll look like one of their choices. Okay. I think got anything I can help with right now? Seems like everybody's okay right now, so I'm going to try to get a couple more of these homework grades in. But again, I can always do this later, so please interrupt me if you get a question.
That's really just this limit definition, like that. Are you talking about this one? Oh, uh, estimate array. So that's like. Um, if you give me just a second here, I'd like to talk about number seven on the board just because I've had four or five different people ask me about this one and I think there's a good learning experience to get out of this. Okay. I don't have this uh, printed out, but for me, number seven, For me, number seven is the one on the bottom left of the back, the one that says answer negative 2x sine x squared. And this notation is asking you to take the second derivative of this. And what I did, and what it seems like everybody who asked for help on this question did, is they took the first derivative using the product rule and you should be able to do that and then for the second derivative you have to take the product rule two more times and your work just gets really messy and it's hard to keep it up correctly and hard to figure out how to simplify it. So what I did is I again I did this twice before I tried to get um, more creative here but the lesson I think you need to get out of this is that anytime you guys can do fraction work or exponent rules or trig identities, any way, anytime you can rewrite it before the calculus, that's usually going to be the easiest. And what I mean by that in this question, tangent is really just sine over cosine. You need to know that. They know, expect you to know that one for the AP exam. So cosine times sine over cosine just gives you sine. So the first derivative of sine would be cosine, and then the second derivative of sine would be negative sine. And that's a whole lot easier than doing those three product rules. Again, even though you should be able to do product rule, if you had time to try question seven, you realized uh, that was just not a very friendly path. But since all of this just simplifies to be sine, you really were just taking the second derivative of sine, and it's a whole lot easier that way. So again, especially if the question seems difficult, see if you can rewrite it and then try the calculus. You shouldn't always try to do the calculus first.
So just out of curiosity, after the mock, after y'all scored your mock exam, do you feel better about the AP exam or worse? Better. better? I thought you thought the mock exam was tough though. Well, I thought I was gonna fail it, but I didn't. Okay. So generally, y'all felt better after the mock exam. Okay. There's a few notes. Honestly, half of the mock exam should just be kind of alerting you that, hey, I need to put in a little bit more work here.
to like make it match the identity. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You don't have to follow me. I just for my brain, I just need to make it match up.
with John to do after that to simplify. Uh, Looks like you didn't use product rule. Oh. You've got this time still, so you're gonna have to do product rule. Okay, y'all still have about 10 minutes. And again, if I was you for your circuit, unless you're finishing the circuit in class, you're not gonna be able to work the very last question without this double angle identity I have on the board. It's not one you have to know for the AP exam, but you're not gonna know if your last answer is right otherwise. So please at least jot it down to the top of your page so that you can use that when you need to. <clears throat> so again, you got now we're down to about eight minutes, so don't quit yet. You've still got a little bit of time to get some more work in. But if you did not have time to finish the circuit, 130, that's okay. If you didn't have time to look through 131 to mark those up yet, that's okay. Because I'm asking you to turn it in. The homework is turned into an assignment for last class, and the homework is the 10 delta math questions. I know those are not due for a week, but this is the one time to give you homework time to do it. So. And make sure that you're writing your work down, that you can share that. The delta math doesn't count without the work shown. That's right.
crazy. Well, I mean, I don't know if that's the right answer for this. Yeah, do you want to go to the I mean, I'm with you, but don't you like kind of like to balance out? Like, you know, maybe do the harder classes and stuff that they put in. Like, it's not hard to do. Yeah, like, I don't think I'm going to do that. Yeah, I you guys are down to about three minutes so you might want to write down what you need to finish up what needs to be finished by Thursday and then the rest can wait since I've already got you um, a set homework assignment <laughs> 